Hello! In this episode of Finno Greek Machining, it will be this one. Uh, this is just uh, the final end of uh, the compressor. Uh, there will be uh, a seal for the shaft, uh, so it keeps the oil in. Uh, there, well, uh, I'll add that some uh, <laughs> picture which shows how this is supposed to operate. But this is uh, some late job, but very little of that. It's a mostly milling, uh, milling task. Uh, well, to make this a little bit uh, more interesting, uh, well, uh, before each operation, I ask something if you know why I'm doing this, what is the reason what I'm uh, doing uh, in a way. Uh, so let's see if you can uh, uh, answer those questions. Uh, they are, well, they are pretty, uh, pretty simple things. Sometimes uh, I have found out that uh, um, this sort of thinking, why I am doing it this way? Would there be a, be a better way to do this? Yeah, okay. So, uh, well, but uh, first uh, we shall visit the lathe. <laughs> Before starting, I would like to show what is this part all about. This is the end where the oil enters the compressor. The oil is under compressed air pressure at this point. The oil is routed under the veins through this hole in the bushing. Since the oil is under compressed air pressure, it pushes the veins against the cylinder walls. Some of the oil will leak at this end of the compressor through the bronze bushing. One could have a soft seal here, but that seal would have to deal with the pressurized oil. Instead, there will be an additional part that has room for the leaked oil and that has a groove that routes the oil to the low pressure side of the compressor. This way, the shaft seal does not need to deal with the compressed air pressure. This is a cold rolled steel hook, 70 mm in diameter. My intention is to face both ends of it and adjust the thickness to hmm, 20 mm. You will see that in the finishing cut I leave the very center of the hook unfinished. What do you think? Why do I do that? This insert is very easy to crack. If I would uh, try to face the very center of this hook, the insert uh, would crack because of the very low surface B there. So, I leave the center unfinished. There will be a hole anyway, so it doesn't matter.
Now, <laughs> facing the other side. I keep on facing until uh, the thickness is 20 millimeters. The workpiece is now centered in the dividing head. It lies flat against the chuck jaws. The spindle is on its turn centered with the workpiece by sweeping around the workpiece with a dial test indicator. I am going to drill and ream a 8 mm through hole here. The shaft of the compressor is 14 mm. So why am I making a 8 mm hole here? This 8 mm hole is used later to position the workpiece for drilling and boring the features for this hole. I am using a small drill to keep cutting forces to minimum. Now I am drilling the bolt circle. I could use direct indexing for the bolt circle itself, but 
since the eccentric center hole is 22.5 degrees apart from these, my only option is to use indirect indexing. not drilling these 4 mm holes through the workpiece here. Can you tell the reason for this? I cannot drill these holes through, because I would then be drilling the chuck jaws. The remaining uh, 3 mm will be done in the drill press. Here I am piercing those 4 mm holes to become true holes. I am not attaching the workpiece into the walls. Can you tell why is that? The pre-drilled 4mm hole guides the drill bit to the correct position. If I would attach the workpiece to the vise, the hole might become crooked, or in the worst case I would crack the drill into the hole. Now I am using a 8 mm pin with the 8 mm hole to locate the work PC in place. I was not comfortable with uh, drilling and boring this hole bigger in the dividing head because of the cutting forces involved here.
The hole is going to be drilled to 17 mm and there is going to be a recess for a shaft seal. Here I am setting up my Wollhaupter boring head and my long stroke dial indicator for boring the recess for a shaft seal. I have made an adapter that allows me to attach uh, the dial indicator to overarm support. This makes it easy to track the depth of the recess. I use a wide parallel to extend the table surface for the dial indicator.
in order to bore a precise diameter recess, I have to make the final cuts the same way. The depth of cut and surface speed should be reasonably similar. Why is that? All boring bars flex. The amount of flex depends on the material of the boring bar and the cutting forces involved. This is the reason why the last cuts should be reasonably identical. This makes the last cut predictable. The goal diameter was 30 millimeters. Well, <laughs> one hundredth of a millimeter oversize is not too bad. Okay, that's it. <laughs> uh, well, uh, that workpiece became exactly this workpiece became exactly as planned. Uh, now I just need to get the uh, ceiling for that. Uh, well, those are available. <laughs> yes, I checked that uh, with those dimensions uh, I can uh, buy. Uh, it's off the shelf thing. So yeah. Uh, 
Well, in the next episode of Finno Greek Machining, it might be a little bit different. Uh, we uh, pass this a little while uh, because uh, I have now uh, acquired a parting plate uh, with uh, inserts, but I don't have a holder for that parting plate. Um, it's Sandvik uh, and it's uh, something like Kut RQ. RQ cut, something like that. Uh, it's a very special plate, it's only two millimeters wide and, uh, and etc. But they didn't have a good holder for that one. Uh, yes, they do have a holder. Uh, it's first of all uh, from Sandvik, it's really expensive. And uh, furthermore, it's uh, not suitable as such into this uh, Multifix uh, size A. So I need to, I would have to mill that one also down. So I thought that, okay, uh, uh, well, uh, I can uh, mill a little bit more and make it all from scratch. I have the required steel available. I have tool steel and uh, this time it will be, in the next episode I mean, it will be also a heat treatment because uh, this should be heat treated. Uh, not to be like a cutting tool, but uh, to have some hardness uh, to resist against uh, uh, screwing it down into the holder. Yeah, okay. So, but that will be in the next episode of Finno Greek Machining. Uh, till then, bye!